everybody. My name is Amy and I'm an art teacher here in Madison and this summer I'm doing a series of art activities for the Madison Public Library. It's called Art with Amy Madison Public Library Summer 2020. Today we're going to start by doing some drawing and we're going to do some drawings based on something called Whatchama Draw It. It's this little card game that I have which is really fun and you basically pick a card and you draw really fast and it kind of taps into your imagination and so you draw all different kinds of things that it tells you to draw and you just do the best that you can so for drawing today i have a sketchbook and i have a dot sketchbook right now this is what i'm using you can draw on a sketchbook which is really nice then you can keep all of your sketches together and use them later on if you don't have a sketchbook, you can draw on any kind of paper that you have. Here are some sketches that I've done in my sketchbook that I've drawn and then I've colored in. Um, they're kind of fun. I really am into birds lately. So I've been doing birds, but they're not very realistic looking birds because it has super long legs and taller than the flowers. Here's another one that I did with an angry owl, another bird, and these bubbles. Um, here's one with a kite and the person is sitting on a ball of string. Here's a bird in the box. It's popping out of the box like a jack in the box. Here's a bird that's in the flower holding up an umbrella under the rain. And you can see sometimes I color them and sometimes I don't. These are just ones that I've done from my imagination. Um, it's not ones from the Whatchama Draw It box, but we're going to work on some of those today. So if you don't have a sketchbook, just grab some paper and we'll draw with some paper. And I would recommend a pencil, but I am going to draw so you can see it with a um, big black marker, just so you can see what I'm doing when I'm doing it, okay? And then we'll talk a little bit about color. I have some markers and some colored pencils. You could use crayons, you could use whatever you want. So the first card that I drew that I thought would be fun to do from Watch My Draw is draw your name using fancy, wacky, or silly letters. So draw your name using fancy, wacky, or silly letters. So I'll put it here and I'm gonna draw down here so I'm gonna look down as I'm drawing. So my name is Amy. It's really simple, really easy. In capital letters, it's A-M-Y. There it is. And if I'm gonna draw, and I'm gonna draw it fancy, I would probably start by drawing it in cursive if you know cursive. If you don't know cursive, just go with what you know, right? So here's my name in cursive. Kind of fancy. But if I wanted to make it look kind of different and I wanted to manipulate the letters a little bit, which is what it's asking me to do, I would just kind of go like this and I would bubble it up. See that? So all of a sudden it starts to look a little bit fancier, a little different and I can manipulate it in different ways. I also could add other things to it. I'm gonna add a star on the tail of my A right there. And it's not a perfect star, nothing really has to be perfect, but I'm just gonna put that on there like that. So there's my fancy one. Wacky, I'm gonna do some bubble letters and I think I'm gonna put some, I'll actually put some round circles on the A. I'll put some arrows on the M on the tops and the bottom of the letter, and on the Y, I'll just make it be all wavy, right? So here's my A. There's a big bubble on the A. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? We'll remove that over. My M, I'm gonna put some arrows. Sometimes you see graffiti artists do some really great letter manipulation, especially in Madison right now. It's great to go down State Street and take a look at the beautiful murals with all the letters that are manipulated on it. Y. There's my Y, my silly, my wacky letters. And then silly letters, they could be anything. If you want to get a little bit more advanced, you can overlap and underlap your letters. So you could go like this, let's see. Here's an A, I'll make it be long and short. 
Here's my M. I'm gonna turn it a little bit sideways. See this? And I'll make it underlap it. Like I'll make it go way down there under the A. And then my Y, maybe I'll turn that this way. And I'll make it go way down there. So fancy, wacky, silly letters. That's the first one. Now I'm just gonna leave this. You can color this in if you want. Maybe later, come back to it later. And I'm gonna switch and I'm gonna go to the next page. My next page, it says, draw, I pick this card from what you would draw it. Draw a person with, a, with silly eyes, a gigantic nose, I got a pretty big nose, and a crazy smile. So draw a person with silly eyes, a gigantic nose, and a crazy smile. Okay, so if, since this is kind of unrealistic, I'm just gonna make the head be unrealistic too. And I'm gonna make the head kind of be like an alien head with a really skinny chin and a more sort of flat head, what I imagine it would be like. So let's do some silly eyes. So I'm gonna do one gigantic eye like this. I'm gonna make it have an eye socket. There's some eyebrows, I'm sorry, eyelashes. There's some eyelashes, right? And then another silly eye. What if I do a little eye like that? Like this. There we go. Kind of feels like he's looking or he or she is looking at you. Maybe some eyebrows in there. Right. And then it says draw a gigantic nose. How about a big gigantic nose? So the nose is gonna go from the eyebrow down. Woo, there's a big nose. There's its nostrils. And then it says, with a crazy smile. Well, I'm gonna make this person have a smile kind of like this with some teeth in there. They're kind of a side talker. Have you ever met someone that talks out of the side of their mouth like that, like a pirate? There we go. And I can add more, I can add ears. Maybe a couple little sprigs of hair. I don't know, this person looks kind of worried. This weird person looks worried, don't they? There we go. There's my person with silly eyes, gigantic nose, and a crazy side talking smile. He's worried. Okay, next one. I love sometimes to draw monsters. I don't know about you because there's usually no rules about monsters. You can do all kinds of crazy things, can't you? So this one I picked out from Whatchamadrawit says, Draw a monster with a pizza head, a hot dog body, and french fry arms and legs. I love drawing food. I don't know about you guys, but I love to draw food things. So I'm gonna draw this one. I'm gonna do this one. So draw a monster with a pizza head. So here we go. He's gonna have a slice of pizza head. Here he is with some pepperoni eyes, maybe a sausage mouth. And I'm gonna give him one little mushroom eyebrow right there. Hot dog body, that's pretty easy, right? Hot dog body, here we go. Here's his hot dog body. And french fry arms. So I'm gonna draw a bunch of french fries. Kind of starts to look a little bug-like. Doesn't he look like a little bug? With french fry arms and french fry legs. <laughs> that a monster with a pizza head, hot dog body, french fry arms, and french fry legs. There's another one. I, I don't think I'm gonna draw this one, but I just wanted to give it to you and as an example example, excuse me, what you gonna draw it. It says draw a planet where people walk upside down. That's a good one. That would be hard, wouldn't it? A planet where people walk upside down. I like this one too. Draw a picture of yourself, but add an extra eye. 
Like where would you add the eye? Would you add the eye on your forehead, on your nose, on your chin? I did this one a little bit earlier and I did this drawing of myself and I added the eye. Let's see if I can find it. I added an eye on my chin. Oh, that wasn't it either. Here it is. So here's this one. I drew this picture of myself and then I added my regular eyes and then I added an eye on my chin right there. So I'm going to do one more drawing and then I wanted to talk to you a little bit about color, how to color and add color to things and show you some techniques. So this one I'm going to draw is um, another food one and it says draw an ice cream house. I was just over at the new chocolate shop. I don't know if you guys have been there, but I love ice cream. So this is a pretty easy one, I think. You can draw an ice cream, I'm draw an ice cream cone house, okay? So I'm actually gonna put it in a cup like that. And then I'm gonna make the ice cream. See that? And then I'm gonna go like this. Like it's a cone. Okay. And I'm gonna put a door right here. Like here's the beginning of the ice cream house. Maybe up here I have some windows on the first floor, second floor. Maybe over here there's a window. Just like that. Pretty simple. Should I put a window up here too on this, the attic floor? There we go. Maybe a fence. There we go. There's my ice cream house. Oops, can you see it? Mm, what flavor would you have? My favorite is mint chocolate chip. Okay, so let's go backwards a little bit to one of the other drawings that I just did. And I would like to talk to you a little bit about color. Let's go back to the pizza monster head guy. This guy, pizza head, hot dog body, french fry legs, right? So if you have crayons, you can color with crayons at home, which are great. If you have markers, you can use markers and you can also use colored pencils. Markers are nice because what markers do is it provides you with some really bright color right away. And on my pizza head guy, I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow. And this is a Sharpie marker, but you could use Crayola, you can use paint markers, you can use whatever you have at your house, right? So you can see it adds some really nice color in there right away. Here's a brown, it's kind of a dark brown, but I'll put the crust as a brown. See that? Maybe my mushroom is brown here too. I'm gonna use red. Let me use a little red. So here's his pepperoni eyes. And I, I think I might put a little bit of red and then I also might put a little bit of orange. Like I, if you like, if you like orange cheese and red cheese, sometimes they, or mozzarella cheese, right? They put different kinds of cheese on like that. And then I also could put, I might maybe put sausage. The sausage could be brown too, I guess, for the sausage in here. And you can see right away, right? When you add color with markers, it gives you this really nice sort of bright, intense look, doesn't it? What if you only have colored pencils at home? So you can use colored pencils as well. So I wanna show you two color pencil techniques, okay? I'm gonna show you red or just red. So sometimes when people color with colored pencils, they go like this and they color directionally. See this? I'm just coloring up and down directionally. And when you color with a colored pencil, you want to put your colored pencil strokes right next to each other. Like you don't want to be all crazy and all over the place. And usually you can do that sometimes if that's your technique, but if you want to fill something in fairly fast and make it look kind of thick, right? you put a layer of colored pencil and you put, your you put your colored pencil strokes right next to each other. So you see how I did that? I did that pretty fast. 
I've, I'm, I've been coloring and I've been doing art for a really long time. Like that, right? But if you are looking at that, it's pretty good coloring, but here's the thing. It's not very exciting, is it? So there's two techniques you can do to make color with colored pencils much more exciting. So the first technique is you can just use the same thing, use the same color and watch. Using more pressure with your hand, you can put something called a gradient. And a gradient just means you have dark, you have medium, and you have light. So if I'm using red, I have dark red, I have medium red, and I have light red. And when I do that, automatically, watch, I'm gonna put some light up here. Automatically, that makes that pizza head, see that, look way more interesting. Like you look right at that pizza head, don't you? The monster pizza head, right? Pizza slice, because it's got this dark behind it, it's got a medium, and then it's got a little bit of light. So that is using one color, is called a gradient, okay? Here's another thing you can do with colored pencils, which is really cool. It's called glazing. And glazing is just like a glazed donut. I don't know if you've ever gone and you've gotten a glazed donut before, right? You get a glazed donut and you, you get this donut and it looks so good. And the glaze, you can see there's this like clear coating of sugar on top of the donut. But you can still see the color of the donut underneath it. Now, I'm not talking about frosting. I'm talking about the glaze, right? So with colored pencils, it's the same exact thing. What you can do is you can put a layer of color pencil. So I'm using sea green. And I can put a layer of sea green right here. And then all of a sudden I can glaze it and I can put a different color. So I'm gonna put purple on top of this sea green. And watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this and it's gonna show you purple and it's gonna show you you can still see some of the sea green underneath it. It's just like a glazed donut. You see that glaze is on it, but you also see the color of the donut underneath it, right? That's called glazing. So if you're using colored pencils, you can add um, interesting points and dynamic points by doing glazing and by doing gradients on top of it. And it doesn't have to be colored realistic, does it? Because we made it up, it's a monster, right? Another thing you can do, which isn't in Whatchamadoodle, but here's the thing, or Whatchamadrawit, is you definitely can add some really great speech or thought bubbles, right? And a speech or thought bubble, right, like this, right? It makes you, um, makes you imagine, and you have to imagine what this person or what this monster would say or what this monster is thinking, right? And uh, I'm gonna say, Holy hot sauce. Holy hot sauce. It feels like he just ate some hot sauce, doesn't it? Because his face around him is completely red. Maybe I should put some jalapenos on him too, right? Yeah. So that gives you some ideas to get started. If you're having uh, fun inside and you're looking for other things to do, just get some paper and just start drawing. It can be stuff that you make up, like this, that makes no sense to anybody but you, right? Or it can be stuff that you just practice doing and you practice over and over until you get really good at it. Art is just like a sport. The more you practice at it, the better you get. So here's an example of lettering. Or you can just go back into your imagination and just make up scenes, just like this. Thanks for joining me today. And the next session, I will be doing treasure maps. So we'll be looking at how to make a treasure map using a paper bag that you have in your house. Have a good day.